The work that I make is based in very traditional ceramic techniques, but the outcome of that is usually ephemeral sculpture, so I'll work directly on site with raw clay and build the work where it's shown. It's very much time-based and might exist more like a material performance rather than a fixed static object. Sometimes the work will kind of evolve as it's made and shown and sometimes it's more a case of me going in at the end and then breaking the work down. In this case I'll come back to the exhibition at the end and break down the work. Where possible I recycle the same material so with clay in its raw state there's this potential for it to be continually wet down and reworked into soft material again so I really enjoy that possibility for the material itself, I guess, to endlessly be remade. So for this particular work at Wolverhampton, I was really interested in the idea of using the entire exhibition to create an evolving sculpture. So over a period of several months, continually adding to the work, so it's yeah something that's always shifting and that the visitors are kind of experiencing that at different moments. And then hand in hand with that really is this idea of how we record things which are momentary and um, in this case how do we record sculpture that's continually changing and actually involving the public in that process as well. So. Um, inviting them to draw and write in response to the work as it's made. At the end of the exhibition, all of those responses will be gathered together into a book which will act as a kind of record of the work. And so really thinking as well how we record and activate memories publicly and privately, but also how an ephemeral object may sit within a museum collection and what traces the work might leave behind and the format that that might take within a collection long term. I was really thinking about memory and the traces of objects and also looking a lot at the collection and history of Japanware in Wolverhampton, pattern books and um, decorative objects. For me there's a real interest in designs which depict nature, so I'm picking up on particular designs within the sculpture and partly blending plants that I have created from memories and then also mixing that with a particular species. In this case it's endangered plants and thinking about species that in the future might not exist so they maybe only become a memory as well. All of the work that I make is incredibly fragile. When you look at the work that you realise that it is on the brink of collapse, there's usually a combination of them being very delicate but also the way that I build the work, because it's not fired, there might be a very solid base as well. In some ways, both something very fragile, but also very rough, maybe more similar to this raw material that comes out of the ground. Writing is often a starting point for me, particularly fiction. I see a lot of parallels between written language and clay, actually. The way that you can manipulate that to create a really vivid world. The quotes that I chose partly relate to this idea of the fleeting and human existence. The other quote, thinking much more about this process of recording and trying to grasp something that's continually shifting. As a visitor, I think there's a, you know, a tendency people might go to an exhibition and take a photograph, but I think in asking people to draw and maybe write, it demands they look in a slightly different way as well, that um, it slows down that process and maybe, you know, the longer you spend, the different details you notice, and I'm really interested to see you know, what captures the public's attention and their perception of the work rather than the record only being my view of how I imagine it should be perceived as well.